Thank you, gentlemen. Welcome once more. My second paper is on pages uh, one to four of the proceedings. Title An Electric Field Model of the Ether. You may say, gosh, not, not, not once again. Another model of the ether. There have been so many models of the ether. It is reasonable to assume that they assume the existence of ether, a medium filling empty space, supporting gravitation and transmission of electromagnetic radiation at the speed of light. There have been many models of the ether due to Newton, Bresnel, Stokes, Maxwell, Lawrence, Einstein, Dirac, and the Simhoney Epola model, electron positron lattice model, which seems to be the current one. Right now, there is a hot debate going on among the relativists in the internet uh, on, the, on the ether and the uh, electron positron pair. The model we are proposing here, the electric field model, is simpler and more useful. Now, if you have the electric charges, Q, and the electric fields of a neutral body are all zero. There is no electric field between me and David here. The electric charges in our bodies, there are some come to zero. But it does not mean that the electric charges are not there. The electric field between me and you is zero. But it doesn't mean that the electric fields are not there. Always means that they are perfectly balanced. In the equation here, sigma Qi is equal to zero. What we have is minus Qi plus Qi minus Q1 plus Q2 uh, minus Q3 plus Q4 minus Q5 and so on come to zero. A neutral body will have the same number of positive and negative charges or the same amount of positive and negative charges and therefore the electric field from a neutral body is zero. This is just like saying, saying the obvious. You need the pointer. Hmm? Would you like the pointer as another? Yeah, go get him the pointer. The reason to shift it. The sum of electric charges in a neutral body come to zero, but the electric fields remain balancing out exactly everywhere in space. Like we have a body in equilibrium, a stationary body in equilibrium, it does not mean that there are, there are no forces on it, but it means that the forces are balanced. Balanced electric fields as vector quantities exist in space to constitute the ether, supporting wave propagation with the speed of light, c equal to 1 over the square root of mu epsilon. Permittivity, uh, electric permittivity and magnetic permeability are properties of electric fields of the ether. 
So the electric field border of the ESA immediately supports uh, light propagation at the speed of light as given by this equation, one of square root of one over mu epsilon. Any imbalance in the ether will cause a resultant electric field and a resultant electric force. So, if the sum of electric charges in a body are zero, the sum of square of the charges is not zero. The sum of square of the charges remains the square of any quantity, positive or negative, is positive. So the squares of the electric fields add up. The squares of the uh, charges add up. The squares of the charges uh, add up to uh, create the mass. The mass of an electric charge is proportional to the square of the charge. The pressure of an electric field is proportional to the square electric field. So the electric field border of the ether, the there seem to have been mixed up there. So you have the electric charges, the square of the electric charges making up the mass of the body. The square of the electric fields account for the pressure, for the mass density and for the charge density of the ether. And you will get the speed of light in the ether equal to the square root of pressure over density. And it gives you the square root of one of mu over epsilon. The requirement of any ether model is that it should support speed of light support propagation of light at the at the speed of one square root of one over mu epsilon. So the ether has density, the ether has pressure, but this pressure is balanced. So we don't perceive it. Just like the atmospheric pressure. It is there. How many pounds per square inch? 14.7 pounds per square is 76 centimeters of mercury, but we, we don't feel it. I can make an analogy of the atmosphere. So the ether has pressure, the ether has energy density, the ether has mass density, and it supports terrific propagation of a wave at the speed of light. How does the ether, the ether model explain uh, gravity? If we have two charges here and there, the electric field from, let's say, charge A will interact with charge B. Now, 
We can assume that due to the presence of charge V, the electric field as a location of charge V is affected. So when the electric field from charge A interacts with charge V, we can assume that it is slightly changed in such a way that force of repulsion is reduced. Maybe the charge will open up. The, the field will open up when it meets a similar charge, reducing the force of repulsion. And the charge may close up a little bit, increasing the force of attraction. The net result is the gravitational force of attraction. And the beauty of this assumption is that it automatically maintains the inverse square root uh, uh, relation of force of gravity between bodies. So the electric field model of the ether also explains uh, gravitation. This paper presents the ether as a balanced electric field medium, which has pressure, energy density, and mass density. The pressure, like atmospheric pressure, being uniform in all directions at a point, is not perceived, except in isolated and abnormal uh, circumstances. The ether exists wherever that are bodies or matter in space. Of course, the electric fields from bodies decrease in accordance with the inverse square Coulomb's law. So at, infinitely, at infinite, infinitely long distances from the sources of the field, the field reduces to zero. The concept of the ether as a medium uniformly filling the whole of infinite space is not tenable. There is no way you can have something fill, filling infinite space. Nature is not so extravagant. The only thing that can fill infinite space is nothing. Beyond the ether is a vacuum with no property extending to infinity. Therefore, if you say space is infinite, yes, it's infinite containing nothing, but part of it contains the ether. The ether exists wherever there are bodies or matter in space. Beyond the ether is a body with no property avoid extending to infinity. The electric field model of the ether is simpler and more useful than the particulate models now under discussion by physicists. If you say electron, positron, C, what, what does that mean? What do the electrons and positrons? What do they do? I see these electron positrons C as simply another just a field, an electric field. What the electron position C does could as well be taken over by an electric field. The electric field model of the ether should put to rest the notion of warping or, or curving or distortion of four-dimensional space-time continuum of the special theory of relativity to make a force of gravity between objects. Because the ether model explains gravitation as a pulling force, 
not a push force. So if only two objects exist in the universe, there will still be force of attraction between them. Whereas if it were a pushing force, it will require some other bodies uh, to do the pushing. So the ether, uh, the, the, the electric model of the ether, uh, explains gravitation as a, as a pulling force. Conclusion. The paper considers the universal space crisscrossed by electric fields emanating from neutral bodies, balancing out exactly everywhere and vanishing at infinitely long distances from their respective sources as constituting the ether. This seems to me to be much easier to understand. The ether is a physical medium interconnecting everything and supporting gravitation and propagation of electromagnetic radiation at the speed of light. Certainly, this will not be the end of things. There's bound to be other models of the ether. I believe every one of us here may have his own model of the, of the ether. But this issue of the ether has to be sorted out before science can make further progress. Thank you very much. Attraction force, not a pushing force. Correct. That, that's correct. Okay. The, fine. A pulling force. All right. Then uh, I, I won't ask further questions because I'm about to give a, a paper that comes to the contrary conclusion, <laughs> also based upon Maxwell's ether. So I'll, I'll hold off till then, and if you wish to pose a question to me. Uh, that's fine. I'll do so. Good. More questions? Cameron's got a question. Come on up, come on up here. Thank please. you very much. Uh, it seems to me that uh, you said uh, whatever there is matter, that's either, but in the infinite, uh, uh, far away, there's no matter, there's no either, there's a void. Yeah. Okay, in that case, I think your idea matches Big Bang, right? Then Big Bang says the university, uh, that the universe is limited. Only at the borderline, wherever the expansion can reach. So beyond that, there's nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, here's one question I, I, I set aside. Although I don't like, I agree with you, but I set aside. The, um, uh, the other thing is uh, how impossible that gravitational attraction is a result of push force. For example, if somebody push, Pulls me from my back. Somebody pulls Franklin from his back. We have to go toward each other. How impossible that the push force behind us cannot exist. So, uh, and then, in turn, how must it, accepting some mechanism between him and me, that the force must act to pull? Um, uh, we together. 
I, I believe uh, that this uh, 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 should be a big topic for people to think. <laughs> okay, thank you. Are you saying that, are you also saying that gravitation is a pulling force or a pushing force? I believe so. Gravitational force is a pushing force. Uh, some, uh, some force pushing behind him, some force pushing behind me so that we approach. There's nothing in between pulling each other together. At, at, uh, in an empty space like this, it is impossible to exist that kind of uh, force, at least in my imagination. And uh, maybe someday some part of somebody will find out, oh, there is something in between. The uh, two body that accept that we can find. But at the knowledge uh, that we know now, I can only imagine that Gravitational force is a result of pushing for a pair of pulling force. As a matter of fact, uh, um, last year in a conference, I present an uh, experiment. In two bodies, two objects immersed in a water, the two objects uh, have a, a tendency to get closer. closer. Yeah. So I, uh, from that, I will assume that's a um, medium I call ether, uh, electrical and neutral, the system and the world. And, uh, and uh, because of uh, that uh, pushing force that uh, imperatively existing, the two objects must come closer because of the pull, uh, pulling force. From, uh, from this, um, I would like to say that uh, the uh, the um, fluid medium existing in this universe, producing the gravitational force, has a very high intrinsic pressure. Okay. And um, uh, from that point, I will further think that only the universe being unlimited, infinite, can, can that uh, uh, fluid uh, exist. And uh, there cannot be any place that in the universe, that is a void. Nothing is in that. I, I, I can't accept this. <laughs> yeah, so sorry. Uh, that's how I believe it's not necessary uh, whether, um, uh, whether I have to object yours. And, and uh, of course, I'm more than happy to study your point of view too. I agree with you. There may, there may be no space where there is nothing. Uh, there may be. Okay, okay, thank you. Thanks. Well, I was kind of curious. You mentioned that your ether has mass density. So, what 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 is its density in in, in the kilograms per cubic centimeter? What? What well, you mentioned that your ether has mass density. So, what is it? Electric field. I didn't quite hear what you were saying. In your slide there, you said that your ether has mass density. Yes. So, so what is its density? The ether is a collection of electric fields from neutral bodies. And the density uh, is the sum of, the, the, the energy density is the sum of a half epsilon zero E squared of the electric field in there. Uh, that doesn't that? make any sense to me. Mass density is measured in, uh, say, kilograms per cubic meter or something like that. Like I could have the density of this of this book has a specific density. You know, it's probably like you know two or three grams per cubic centimeter. That's what, what I what what consider do, mass what density. What I do in the energy density, a half epsilon e squared is the energy density of an electric field. You can convert that to mass density by the mass energy equivalence law. E is equal to half mc squared. Okay, that, that's terrific. So what is it? That should that should end up being a specific number. Well, the electron volt measurements you use in your for energy or uh, and for your mass equation, there is a direct correlation between kilograms per cubic centimeter or grams per per cubic centimeter and electron volts. Physicists today convert those back and forth like they were equivalent. 
when they measure the mass of an electron, they state it in electron volts, which I believe is the way you're stating it. He's only stating it in uh, classical terms, but there is a, a conversion for that. Yes, uh, you, you, that's a conversion. Yeah, it doesn't sound like you've done the actual calculations to come up with the conventional mass density. It would be an interesting conversion, an interesting exercise to see what that actually is. Huh? I'll try it. Although I'm not quite sure, I guess my main objection is I'm not sure you're actually presenting us with an actual model of the ether. Uh, I think this is very similar to Bill Lucas's um, viewpoints that the electric field itself is just fundamental, that it's that it's just there, right? And uh, there's really no explaining it because um, what, what I can see here is that you're just saying that the ether is anywhere where there's an electric field, which is, I don't know, kind of obvious, but it's really, I mean, is that your view that the electric field is just that fundamental? I think that, that's it, yes. That's it, yes. The electric field, the fundamental thing. And then uh, how the electrical explain? phenomena uh, manifestation of electric charge and electric field. So how do you explain that this field can have very specific vectors pointing to it? So like if you have a, a positive charge, it's often you can see there's like a magnetic, there's a specific electric field point, which is like an arrow pointing outward. So how, how does your fundamental field represent things like that without actually being physical? Or like the magnetic field, you know, if you put a compass in a magnetic field, it will point its north pole in a very specific direction. So that my challenge to you is, is if, say, the, electric, the electromagnetic field is fundamental, then how can it represent something like a vector, which is a specific direction in space, without it having no physical components. Because that's what you mean by fundamental, that it's composed of no other pieces. Electric fields does not exist between me and you. Agreed? That's what I want to say that the electric field are not there. They are there. The square of the electric fields remain to account for the mass density of the ether, to account for the uh, energy density of the ether, to account for the pressure of the ether. But it can't account for like the magnetic field vector. That's not kind of Thing of that, of course, I'm a I'm I'm a etherist, but I'm a particle etherist. So, and I would be in opposition to this and saying that you're not really presenting a model. What you're doing is just basically repeating the empirical observations of what we see happening in space and saying that that that's fundamental and that's certainly an approach you can take. But I don't think if I asked you if you know what this ether is made out of that you could say anything other than it's, it's the uh, electric field or, or that it's, you know, there's nothing physical you could point to. to say that, that an electric field is a physical thing. But if it is a physical thing, then the only way that it could represent, say, a magnetic vector, the only way, in order, the minimum thing that you need to represent eight directions, at least two particles, that represent the beginning and the end of the arrow, right? Just like my finger, there has to be at least two different things in order to represent something pointing in the direction. So in that way, I don't think that the, uh, that the, that the ether can be thought of as something being fundamental because in its very base, in order to represent vectors for the electric or magnetic field, there has to be at least two things, two physical things representing that. So I don't know, I don't know what you think of that. But. All right, something to think about. That is it. Any other questions? Cameron. Thank you, Franklin. Um, 
when you uh, when you uh, ask a uh, user how do you measure the mass density of the ether and I have a very mature thought I believe it can be done however not I'm unable to uh, because it should take a lot of calculation to do it the way to do it is that to, to measure the ether drag of the high speed particle. Uh, nowadays, there's a popular uh, concept in mass defect or mass energy conversion. And uh, in, um, it means that the, in the high speed particle uh, uh, measurement, we found that some mass disappear. I believe it's not because of the um, mass and energy con uh, conversion. It is because when the uh, particle travel at high speed, it causes the drag uh, uh, from the ether. But ether is a fluid filling in airway space. Uh, another um, obvious thing, to, uh, thing is that uh, so far when we measure uh, some maps, we have two ways. One is static way. Uh, another, uh, another way is a dynamic way. This static way is like a spring or scale, but this cannot be done with tiny particle. We have to use the, uh, the, the electrical field uh, and then measure the speed of the, uh, the, uh, uh, the high speed traveling particle and see how, um, how they end up where to, uh, uh, where, where, where to uh, uh, land on an instrument. Um, because of that, um, when it lands at a certain place, uh, we found that they land the place, not corresponding to what we expect, but somewhere else. And right now, we conclude that it is because of mass energy conversion, so some mass loss. But to me, I think that energy loss is not mass energy conversion, but some of the kinetic energy that are um, uh, carried by the uh, high-speed tra uh, high traveling particle get lost due to either drag. So someday, and if somebody think either drag can be a useful uh, concept, and think on that way, I think we can uh, think of some way to measure the ether mass. But of course, I am unable to do it. <laughs> Thank you. Although on the, on the question of ether density, you know, Suhimoni has, and, and has calculated the density, and it's like five million times the density of steel. So it's really heavy, so, but that's an aside. Very heavy. <laughs> Extremely dense, ridiculously dense, as dense as what we currently think the nucleus is. Okay, any other questions? No. So, gentlemen, I really appreciated your response. Thank you very much.